Hi, Roy here from Roy Reads Anything. This is this is the downstairs sign. There's a much, much more sophisticated one when I'm upstairs. But, um, you know, this is it. It's downstairs. So this is what you're getting. Uh, right, and I'm going to talk about two westerns. I've trailed this a bit. So westerns in that genre of the metal hand so uh, in 1980 this book was published claw by wl fieldhouse he lost his hand in a bloody fight for justice but he won a reputation as the deadliest gun in the west when john clawson returned from the war to great fort he found his parents dead victims of a phony indian raid and their property confiscated by banker warren t jennings so yeah, kind of a classic setup, a town that's been taken over by the bad guys and loved ones killed and there's all sorts of um, bad guys wandering, wandering about, doing the, doing the bidding of the, of the chief, the chief, the sort of brains of the outfit, this Jennings, the banker. So Mr. Clawson tries to, tries to intervene doesn't go so well he gets a hand chopped off with a machete and he gets shot and left for dead but he's not dead he uh, has a doctor doctor friend who patches him up they he's in a bad way but they get him a uh, they get him a prosthetic hand which comes with comes with a kind of two little gripper things or unscrew that and you can put in a hook that hook we're going to see a lot used as a weapon but not content with that he gets another friend a blacksmith to to make a to adapt two other things a saber so he gets a uh, a, a single edge blade he can screw in and a gun they actually adapt a pistol that can be screwed onto the hand as well so he's got quite an array of weapons which are then as you might imagine, deployed as he goes on the vengeance trail. So it's a vengeance-based western with the the gimmick of the guy with these um, devices on his on his hand. So his name, remember, is Clawson with a K. As time goes on, it gets shortened because somebody trying to say his name as he lies in a pool of blood, dying, and doesn't say the whole name. So the legend of Claw spreads throughout the west and the the initial round of vengeance stuff seems to have gone by quite quickly but then there are so many bad guys and there they, they end up with sort of different different ones to hunt down in different situations and he even ends up having to to assault a fortress uh, almost single-handedly to take to take down the 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 adversaries it's it's actually pretty good it's action-packed it has good character building uh, for instance the, the the claw guy you know sometimes he's got some some introspection about what it means to basically be disabled and how long is he going to spend his life pursuing this vengeance stuff you know that that sort of thing so it's got a bit of depth to it and the, how they how they resolve the situation of the town that used to be run by bad guys and you know how do you who's taken everything how does that actually get put back together and how does that work uh, so pretty decent novel um, there's things about it that although this is written by an American author it makes it very like the British Westerns by the group known as the Piccadilly Cowboys so things like the short sim single syllable name the, the, the gimmick weapon um, and some of the chapters end with, with, with sort of gallows humour type puns as well. They're all trademarks of the Piccadilly Westerns. So that was a group. George G. Gilman, real name Terry Harknett, would be the most successful author of the longest running series of that nature, Edge. Others, Angus Wells, Lawrence James, James Harvey went on to be a crime writer. Uh, Fred Nolan and Ken Bulmer gets counted 
on account of one book that he wrote. Uh, so this was a group of writers who they, they did socialise together, they, they would sometimes collaborate. Uh, so some of those long-running series, you know, basically when I was growing up, you'd go to WH Smith's, there'd be shelves and shelves of westerns, including these long, long numbered series with what seemed like staggering, staggeringly high numbers of episodes of, of the, the various characters. Um, Edge, Apache, Hearn the Hunter, Hart the Regulator, etc, etc. Loads of them. Uh, like I said, they would meet up in a bar in London. A bar called The Bunghole. Its name is The Bunghole. You can look it up. It's, it's in a street called High Holborn. It's now called The Bunghole Cellars in Davies Wine Bar. I once went there, was there in London for a work thing, walked up that way so I could sort of visit the, the, the place where that group had once been and uh, it was fine in a wine barish kind of way. Um, as I recall they had a, a speciality of um, wine served in a pewter tankard which seems rather Dickensian. Uh, anyway, going off topic a bit, so Piccadilly Cowboys wrote those very successful books. You could perhaps they should have been called the Bunghole Cowboys, but they, they weren't. Um, Angus Wells was one of them. He wrote a series called Claw with a C under the pseudonym Matthew Kirk. There were three of these Claw with a K books, okay, and um, Claw with a C came out in 1983 and there were six of them in the end and that was the last new Piccadilly Cowboy series to come along so they'd been going for 11 years by then I think the first Edge book was 1972 pretty sure so yeah a late entry into into that genre um, Claw with a C and again okay some similar things happen bad guys chop a guy's hand off, well they, they, they smash his hand to pieces to the point where it has to be cut off by his friend, a doctor. The guy himself is a blacksmith, he forges his own claw-like glove type thing that he then he then uses as a as a weapon, so it's just, just the one just the one sharp-ended thing on the end of his arm but still still in the same sort of area the bad guy's name is also Jennings, so you could see, deliberately or not, there might have been some sort of cross fertilization there. A lot of similarity. Now, uh, oh, did I say it was written by Angus Wells? Can't remember. But yes, he wrote it and he was probably the uh, responsible for the, the bloodthirstiest versions of the, uh, the, the, the Piccadilly novels. Um, and in this, it's taken to a sort of splatterpunk extreme, I suppose. Sometimes the deconstruction of the human body goes on for one or two pages. And it's not as good. It's the, you know, the formula seems to be getting quite tired. It's quite straightforward. You know, you're terrible bad guys who do terrible things that you've read about at such extreme lengths that you want them to be taken down. And um, unfortunately, he's only just started. It's going to take a couple more books just to work through the... Uh, probably because the mayhem takes so long to describe. Um, it's going to take a while to, to, to get rid of those guys and then he, he moves on to other things, I suppose. Um, so it's like... This was maybe a sort kind of there were. It was the last series, but Edge carried on for a, a few more years after that. But it was it was sort of um, sort of reaching the end, I suppose. And it, it to me, it's just too much sort of. You know, there's a bit more in the claw with a K book to keep you interested, and with a little bit. I mean, it is ridiculous the things that could never happen, but it's got a little bit more realism. A little bit more, uh, what's the word, um, more of a relatable hero, 
um, and it isn't just oh I see you know big atrocities followed by big vengeance then then it's done so that's my scoring I would rank the, the two entries in the in the, the, the metal clawed western hero genre I would rank claw with a K at the top I actually know nothing at all about this author um, but got a lot of affection for the Piccadilly Cowboys overall um, I just, just just don't start with the claw books if you're curious about them I would say Edge really is 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 the daddy um, there's some other other good series as well probably Hearn the Hunter would be another one I'm quite fond of and the Piccadilly Westerns clearly were building on the the sort of um, the popularity of spaghetti westerns so spaghetti western movies super violent things like slow motion bloodshed all that sort of stuff was translated into the page in a way and, and that just really took off you know that really took off the the, the initial books and series were, were really massive sellers um, so so there was that and that had a long long sort of afterlife edging into the 80s so that's where both the claw books are kind of drawing their drawing their energy from uh, but the the British Piccadilly books I don't know for some reason the the shelves were filled with violent pulp fiction at the time things like Sven Hassel's war books and stuff like that I uh, don't know why what it was about the 70s brought that out maybe it was the strikes and the power cuts so we'll we'll see a resurgence of this kind of thing coming up this winter perhaps but also it, there's a kind of british dark humor that undercuts it a bit as well and makes it bearable you know there's, there's always a sense that these you know the writers know that this is slightly ridiculous on one level but they're doing it straight you can enjoy it it's you know you can in fact some of the the better series you do feel for the characters and and see them as see them having a level of realism but there's there's gags and and humorous stuff that that sort of make it kind of make it kind of ridiculous at the same time so those that that's the package i suppose that was we, we got in that era okay claw versus claw i'll be back another time with something else i've got to go and make a pizza now uh so i don't know why 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 am i telling you that i will see you soon goodbye